Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Teresa Marantet, CEO of the Windsor Essex County Health Unit. I will start with our daily update. We now have 6,258 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Canada and 1,324 cases are in Ontario. Chatham Kent has six cases and Sonia Lampton has reported 21 cases. Michigan now has 5,486 cases with 1,542 cases being in Detroit. To date, we have 44 confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Windsor Essex. The health unit follows up with all positive cases. Due to the increasing volume of positive test results, we will no longer be providing specific details on each case. 60% of the cases are male and nearly half of the cases thus far have been between the ages of 40 and 59. Overall, 862 individuals have been tested for COVID-19 with 492 tests pending. It is important to clarify that pending tests are potential positive cases. Those that are awaiting results are to remain in self-isolation. Testing for COVID-19 should be based on clinical assessment. All specimens submitted will be tested. Where there are shortages of testing kits, the following groups will be prioritized for testing. Symptomatic healthcare workers and staff who work in healthcare facilities, symptomatic residents and staff in long-term care facilities and retirement homes, hospitalized patients admitted with respiratory symptoms, symptomatic members of remote, isolated, rural, and or indigenous communities, and symptomatic travelers identified at a point of entry to Canada. Please continue to visit wechu.org for the most current information and case counts. If you have traveled outside of Canada and are feeling unwell and need to seek a health assessment for COVID-19, you have three options. Complete the online assessment tool available at ontario.ca, contact Telehealth Ontario, or call your primary care provider for a phone assessment or a virtual assessment if available. They will guide you for next steps, including contacting public health or attending an assessment center. I will now turn it over to Dr. Wajid Ahmed, our medical officer of health, for further updates regarding COVID-19. Good morning. Uh, over the last few days, we have seen a significant increase in the positive cases in our community. We expected that increase because of our backlog of pending cases. Our staff worked diligently over the weekend and extended hours to follow up on all the positive cases in the community for case and contact management. At this stage, I'd like to reinforce the community that the likelihood of community transmission is very high and people will do everything, people should do everything to maintain physical distancing. Staying home when they're sick and going out only when it's needed. We are at a crucial time in our fight against COVID-19. All the measures that we are putting in place for more than two weeks now, and if followed properly, it should give us a signal that whether these measures are working or not. We cannot stop now. We must continue until we see the overall decline in new cases in our region, in our province, in our country. Yesterday, British Columbia cautiously reported that they feel that the aggressive measures on physical distancing appears to work for them. For the rest of Canada, including Ontario, and also for our community, we have to keep a close eye on it, and especially this week. Most of these positive cases that we reported in the last two days were in isolation and were tested last week and some the week before. Anyone who's tested this week and come back positive will be an indicator of success of how our aggressive physical distancing measure to flatten the curve is working or not. We know many individuals did not follow the public health direction of self-isolation. To them, I am urging, please follow public health direction of self-isolation. When people are not following the public health direction of physical distancing, and if they have the disease, they are infecting everyone else around them. Some of these infected individuals will end up in, a, in, in hospital. Small number of these infected people will end up in ICU and some may die for COVID-19 as a result of people not self-isolating themselves. Please stay home when you're sick or advised by public health to self-isolate. It is important, please stay home. To the seniors and people with chronic diseases, you are at a higher risk of developing more severe consequences of COVID-19. Please do not go outside of your home 
and meet anyone who does not live in the same house. Please use delivery services for your groceries or other needs. Have your family members bring your essentials to you. Have them dropped off at your door without letting them in. We are at a stage in our community that the likelihood of someone being positive for COVID-19 is high. We need to prioritize individuals who should be tested for COVID-19 as opposed to testing everyone in the community. We know most individuals, up to 80%, will recover on their own without any clinical intervention. Up to 20% will require hospital, administration, uh, hospital admission, and up to 5% will require ICU admission. It is time that we should use our resources carefully to prioritize testing for individuals who are at a risk of developing more severe consequences of the disease. And for the majority, self-isolation will be the best thing in the absence of any treatment. All of us are in this together, and we must work together as a community to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our community. Everyone should continue to practice physical distancing. Please stay home when you're sick or you've been asked to self-isolate, please. Everyone else, else uh, make sure that you are following the physical distancing when you're outside. Wash hands with soap and water thoroughly and often. Cough or sneeze in your, into your sleeves or tissue. And please uh, keep the surface clean and disinfected. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. We'll start with AMA 100. Of the 44 positive cases, how many right now are in hospital? Uh, we heard from the hospital uh, that they have eight cases that are positive in the hospital. Um, uh, overall, there were 10 cases, two were discharged home, eight are currently in the hospital. And what about at Erie Shores and Leaning? Can I understand they have a couple of positive cases? Is that part of the 44? Uh, the, some of the cases that are in, in Erie Shores, they are currently pending for tab lab results. Uh, and until they come back, they will be they will continue to be in that suspected case. They're not included in the 44 cases, uh, to the best of our knowledge. Question from Windsorite.ca. Of the 44 cases, uh, how many of those are travel related? Um, we are getting all those details and we will be providing a good epic summary tomorrow morning. Uh, I can say that uh, initially half of those cases were travel related, but uh, we will be providing that epic summary tomorrow when we have more details on all of these cases. CTV? Uh, I hear community transmission is, uh, is expected, if not already going up a lot. Uh, how bad is it? It is bad because all these measures that we are putting in place, they are there to prevent this community transmission. And if it's happening, that means that our measures are not working or people are not following that. We know a good majority of the people are following those social distancing measures. They are, they are doing their part and not going outside when it's needed. But there are people who are advised to self-isolate who didn't follow the instructions. So I think it is very important for those people to realize that maybe they are fine, maybe they have mild symptoms, but they are putting other people at risk. They are putting some of these individuals who could potentially die as a result of complication of COVID-19. They need to recognize that it's not just them, it's all about us. It's all about all those sick and vulnerable people in our community who could potentially die. And we must act to prevent those things. All these measures are in place to protect everyone in the community, including the sick and vulnerable. So please follow the directions as we are providing you with self-isolation. The number of cases are increasing. The likelihood of them coming in contact with other people is high. We must act. We must act together to prevent this from happening. I heard David Mouge on, on the radio this morning, and I, I can't, I'm not quoting it, but uh, he talked about how this is a critical week. This week, perhaps going into next week as well. How critical is this time in, in terms of flattening that curve? Well, we know that all these social uh, physical distancing measures were put in place uh, about two weeks uh, earlier, like about a little over two weeks. So all of that piece should give us an indication because if, if people are actively following those instructions, we should be seeing an effect on flattening the curve. We have heard from British Columbia that they, have, they, they are showing cautious optimism to the fact that they, they have seen a decline in the, the number of cases that they, they were expecting to see. 
we hope to see that in, in, in Ontario too. We like to see that in Ontario and as long as we are seeing that, it would be a good sign. But on the other hand, because of our pending cases, we may see an increase in the number of cases. So we'll have to be careful in how we're interpreting the data. Any case who develops symptoms this week and come back positive this week, that will be an indication of what's hap what happened in the last two weeks. But for some, we may still see some positive. We still have, I guess, close to 400 cases results still pending. A good number of them can still, can still come back positive. So that would still be an effect that happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we just have to be careful in how we're interpreting the data, but absolutely, I think this week would show us where we are and what to expect in the coming weeks and months uh, in Windsor and Essex and also in Ontario. Question from CDC. I didn't catch what you said this earlier, but reiterate um, the largest age demographic among the 24 cases. So we have half of the cases are between the ages of 40 and 59. 40 and 59. And of the 44 cases, can you say what percentage or how many um, are healthcare workers, either in Windsor or in Michigan? So we don't have all the details of all the 44 cases yet. The health unit staff contact each case, and based on the interview, they determine the possible risk exposure. So that is a question um, that will be answered, but we don't have all of those details um, right this minute on all 44 cases. Okay, thank you. Question from Blackbird. Yeah, to clarify, you're talking about interpreting the results. The 500 that are testing, maybe just to clarify for people, these are people who were tested. Are we getting like last week's test results, two weeks ago test results, is it still a mix? Um, and are new test results coming in? Are people who are tested later than week? Are they coming in sooner? Is the backlog? Are we getting the test results as they were tested, or kind of into the mix? So right now it's a mix. Mix. Uh, some test results we are getting back, uh, which is old results that went to a public health lab in uh, in Toronto. Uh, a good number of them are now going to London. So in the London lab, the results we are getting faster. Some of the pending uh, results we are getting from Toronto, Hamilton. Uh, um, and um, other places and that's why it is a mix right now but we hope that once that backlog is cleared we will be more up to date in terms of who is being tested right now and what their test results uh, look like. And, and that will clarify for you if community transition takes place or if the measures that we take in the last two weeks are actually working? Yes, absolutely. So I think what happens this week with the new cases that develop symptoms and then are tested uh, and come back positive this week, that will be an indication of what's happening in the community. And any questions from the Windsor Star? Dr. Ahmed, yesterday you spoke about the reality of community transition in the area. Is that something you agree with? Uh, you have to uh, remind me what the exact comments are. The, the community transmission is a reality, so that happens. Like, I think initial stage in any type of these pandemic, most of these cases are a result of, uh, uh, of a travel-related cases. So if you look at the measure that the government has put in place right from the beginning in terms of restricting travels to other countries or people coming in from all those infected countries, we try to, to, to put that kind of measures in place to prevent that from happening. Once we pass that state, and if that fails, then we, talk, we start to talk about community transmission. And same, say in the similar way, initially our cases are travel-related, but when they're travel-related cases, if they're not following those instructions, it led, it leads to the community transmission, and this is what we're seeing right now. So community transmission is here? Well, that's what we are, we are, we're assuming based on the data that we have, but we will have uh, more details uh, tomorrow in our epi summary, which will we'll break it down by the travel related versus uh, people who didn't travel but still got infected. How does that change people's behaviors outside of their homes and uh, in terms of decontamination practices? Well, I guess uh, uh, when we're talking about many of these places where environmental cleaning is essential, the workplaces, the businesses, non-essential businesses, they are all um, um, closed uh, already. There are some essential workers who are already working. Some of the places where, where they are still expecting these people, 
they are doing more environmental cleaning. We are asking them to do more environmental cleaning, especially the high touch areas. People in the community, when they are going outside, the same measures still apply. They still need to maintain that physical distancing. They still need to wash their hands frequently and often and thoroughly. They still need to do all those respiratory etiquette that we talk to them about uh, um, um, and protect others from happening. We're still asking people to limit who they meet and who they are coming in contact with. So I think all those measures, we need to take those seriously because if we are taking those measures seriously, we should see a stop in the community transmission as well. Everything, every measure that are happening for more than two weeks now, it all points to the fact that if we follow all of that, we will reduce the spread of the disease. We will break the chain of transmission and people should follow, should play a part in breaking that chain of transmission. What is your recommendation concerning practices such as wearing of gloves, wearing of masks, and uh, disinfecting arm surfaces? Well, um, the high touch places in uh, uh, touch areas in public settings, yes, that is something that we definitely want people to disinfect. When it comes to gloves and masks, I think we have to still be careful uh, in how we're using it. We don't want people to be in that uh, uh, false sense of security that if you're wearing a glove, you are protecting yourself. Well, technically, when you're wearing the glove and you're touching a contaminated surface, you're carrying that contamination in your gloves. And if you're not discarding your glove at the right time or if you're using this glove to touch any other surface, you're still causing that chain of transmission. The best thing still, we, we recommend that if you choose to do that, that's, that's not a recommendation. You can still do that, but make sure that you are washing your hands because that's the, that's the thing that, that's the most important part that you can do. If you're wearing gloves and if you're still touching yourself, you're still infecting yourself. It's not helping. Same thing, if you're wearing a mask and if you're not wearing the mask properly, it can give you a false sense of security that you are protected, but basically you may be at the same risk or could be at a higher risk just because you feel that you have the mask and you can touch yourself and you can do all of those things and uh, it could, uh, could get infected. What about decontamination of groceries? Well, that is something that is uh, there is no evidence of uh, COVID transmission as a result of groceries. Obviously, if you're bringing groceries, you should wash them thoroughly and uh, under 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 tap water to make sure that there's nothing uh, that's on there. Any kind of uncooked meal, you should be you should be washing them thoroughly before you consume them. All the cooked meal, by theory, they should they should get rid of all the all the uh, bacterial contamination or viral contamination. Any other final question? Final question? Final question, yeah. Uh, on Sunday, the province of Ontario uh, introduced a new limit in terms of public gatherings, no more than five people. Who will be enforcing that in the local community? What do you think about the faith community uh, holding religious services going to be? Well, I guess uh, the, when these measures are being put forward by the, by the province, uh, police have the authority to enforce that. Um, we, public health, we also get some of those complaints as well. We follow up on those complaints. But essentially, anyone who has the authority, they can enforce that. It's a provincial law. It's a provincial order. So anyone who, is, who, who can enforce that, they can enforce it. Any questions from anyone else? I do have one follow-up. Okay. At one point, we were waiting seven days to get results back, sometimes longer. If I get tested today, when should I expect those results back? Well, what we have heard is that we should get the results back in 24 to 48 hours. But as I recommended uh, earlier, that uh, you know, at this point, there will be a point where we may feel that unless you, your diagnosis will really change and alter the course of your treatment, we, that there may be a possibility that you may not be, be tested. We are want to prioritize those testing for individuals who will end up in hospital or who will end up in ICU. Having a diagnosis on them is important for the clinical management of those cases. For most of the people, having a diagnosis if they have mild symptoms, it won't change the clinical management on those people. They still need to complete their 14-day self-isolation. So when these lab results, if based on clinical judgment, if it's going to the lab, a laboratory, they will prioritize it, and they may not give out the results as quickly, but for anyone who is sick, who is inpatient, or who is in ICU, 
we expect to get the results back within one or two days at maximum. Any other questions? I have a question about those who are hospitalized because they are exhibiting COVID-19 uh, symptoms. And so they're, they're possible cases, and then we know that they've been tested. The hospital confirmed that before. It was 50 cases, and now we know 10 of them tested positive. I'm wondering if that overall number of hospitalized patients has gone up. Well, we, we are receiving results uh, pretty much the whole day, and uh, we have to go through all those results to, to make a comment on it. Uh, right now, our staff are working to follow up on all those 44 cases that we reported this morning, and once we have more details on those cases, whether they're hospitalized, whether they're community-related, or whether they're travel-related, we will report back on them, but right now, I can comment if, um, uh, if more cases will be still in the hospital or not. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah, just to return to that, um, Dr. Allen, over the weekend there were religious gatherings of more than, of, of more than five people. Um, is there anything special that's going to be done to enforce that, uh, the, the provincial order? Well, we will work with our, uh, our police uh, chiefs to, to come up with a plan. Uh, right now there's a lot happening and uh, practically we cannot police every gathering of five or more. I think uh, we can do a little bit more enforcement. We can be more visible out there. We can we can follow up on all those complaints. But uh, as you can imagine, just keeping an eye on how much, like five people are there or not, it's, it's very difficult to enforce. I think we have to take that as a social responsibility as well. But uh, as I said, we will work on developing a plan to ensure that we are following up on those cases at least to, to deter from these uh, gatherings from happening in the first place. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone.